Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I'll be talking about Alpha. As we already know, this movie came out in August, just this year, but it was so amazing that I had to create a video on this. Essentially, the story is very straightforward. It's about a kid named Kida who goes on his first hunt. And during the hunt, he's thrown off a cliff. And then the film jumps back to a week earlier where we see how Kida was passing his exam to go on the hunt by showing some very good flint spearheads that he had created. His father is actually the leader of their tribe. And he believes that Kida does have the ability to lead that he is stronger inside than he realizes, despite what his mother thinks. You know how mothers are. She thinks he's just a baby, that he can't hack it out there. But his father sees potential in him. They march on towards their hunting grounds so they can get the wild buffalo to bring back home for winter. Meanwhile, Kida is learning the ways of nature and the ways of their tribe. His father shows them the markers that their ancestors had put there so they can guide themselves to the hunting grounds and back home again which will become important later. They even tattoo a star constellation on his hand, a constellation which we would know as the Little Dipper. Along the way, they meet up with another tribe whose leader is actually a friend of his father's. Obviously, they join forces every year because the more men you have for a big hunt, the more game you're going to bring home to the table. They keep journeying further and further, and one night they're attacked by a saber-toothed tiger. Well, actually, he grabs one of them and runs off with them, and there was nothing they could do to save him. They set up a little memorial for him, and they push on. Along the way, Kata is told to kill a wild boar. Well, they have him pinned down. They just wanted him to finish him off, but he couldn't do it. Finally, they make it to the hunting grounds, and we watch flashes of that exact same scene that we saw earlier. And then we're up to the point where he has fallen off a cliff, and he's lying on a rock shelf. And his tribe thinks he's dead, but what they don't know is, he's not dead. He was just unconscious. When he eventually comes to, he tries to head back home before the winter sets in. It proves to be a little difficult because when he got off the cliff, he essentially busted his leg. To make matters worse, he's attacked by wolves. One of them which he wounds just slightly, and the rest of them leave. He was getting ready to finish off that wolf, but he just couldn't do it. So instead, he takes the wolf to a cave with him, he heals the wolf's wounds, and he befriends him. When both their wounds have healed, he sends the wolf on his way, and Kida immediately starts going back home. But the wolf keeps following him. The wolf just won't leave him alone. He just keeps following him. Wherever Kida goes, the wolf follows. Here and there, he's yelling to the wolf to go home, go home with your family. He even throws a stick at it to try to chase the wolf off, but the wolf just grabs the stick and brings it back to him. Gee, we may have just found out how Fetch was created. In the end, Kida gives up trying to chase the wolf off, especially since, clearly, that wolf's not going anywhere. While they're heading back, they're learning how to work together as a team. The wolf is chasing wild boars his way while he finishes them off with a spear. And by accident, he learns how to call the wolf just by whistling. He was just whistling a tune and the wolf would just come back to him. A strong bond forms between the two because of all of this. So much so that he even names the wolf Alpha. They continue their journey following the markers that Kata's ancestors had left behind as well as following the stars. And then one night they run into a pack of wolves, which it turns out it was the pack that Alpha was from. So they leave, and Alpha has a look on his face like, you know, like he misses him. And because Kata understands that, he tells Alpha, go with your family. So Alpha goes with him. And in almost no time flat, Kata just gets the feeling that he made a horrible mistake because he really starts to miss Alpha. The next day, during a huge blizzard, he sees a pack of wolves on a bed of ice and he knows it's Alpha's tribe. So he runs toward the wolves, calling for Alpha. But Kata falls through the ice and Alpha is right on the top of the ice to try to help him get out. But Alpha can't dig through the ice. The only way they can get Kata out is if he punches a hole in it. And eventually he manages to punch a hole right through it with one of his stone knives. And when he gets his arm through the hole, Alpha pulls him up. Reunited again, and after he waits for his clothes to dry, they press on. But in the area where they're at, game is very scarce, so they're looking for anything that they can do to survive. 
There is a glimmer of hope when he comes across a tent, but sadly when he gets there, he finds that the owner of the tent is frozen to death and he has no meat, no furs, no provisions, no nothing. The only thing he has is a bow with a single arrow. After thanking the dead man for his help, they press on. At this point, they're caught in another snowstorm, but what makes matters worse, there's hyenas right behind them getting ready to attack. They run down into a narrow canyon, and they spot a hole they can duck into. They dive into it, the hyenas run by, not knowing that they even passed them. But then Kata and Alpha realize that they're not alone in that cave, because in that cave is a saber-toothed tiger. The tiger attacks, but Alpha fights the tiger with everything he's got, and Kata, with only one shot, takes aim, and and then finally he closes his eyes and lets the arrow fly, killing the tiger instantly. But Alpha is wounded after fighting that beast. They stay the night in the cave, while Kata tends to Alpha's wounds the best he can with what little they have. The next day they move on, but Alpha can't keep up with Kata and eventually falls down. Kata then picks up Alpha and carries him home to which he collapses right in the middle of his village square. The tribe looks in amazement in the fact that he is back. He's home. His parents are very happy to see him. Kata even says to his dad that he just wanted to make his dad proud. And he said, you made it home, son. You couldn't possibly make me any more proud. He immediately points to Alpha and says, Alpha needs help. They take Alpha and Kata into the tent, and the witch doctor does what she can to help them both. Kata will be fine because he only collapsed from exhaustion and lack of food. Alpha, on the other hand, was getting ready to have puppies. And when the first puppy is born, the witch doctor welcomes him to their tribe. Kata holds Alpha's paw and says, it's all over now. After that moment, we're looking at a scene that probably happened a few weeks later because Alpha and Kata are sitting right next to each other and the puppies are getting bigger. He holds up one of the puppies who howls. And then we jump to the next hunt. The men are walking over the horizon and their wolves are with them, obviously showing that these wolves have now become man's best friend. And this time, their hunt is going to be a lot easier. And they end the movie by showing the title, Alpha. It's a great movie, one that everyone must see. It is 100% original, 100% different. It's not a damn remake or a rehash or anything like that. Is it scientifically accurate? I think it's pretty darn accurate. The animals that you see, they're very accurate. They're all CG, but then again, they don't exist anymore, so it makes perfect sense. The wolf is real, actually. You do see a real-life wolf here in quite a few scenes. Just in scenes like when they're fighting that saber-toothed tiger and other scenes that could have been dangerous to the wolf, obviously they had to use CG because they wouldn't want to endanger that wolf in any way. What I like so much about this movie is the whole theoretical basis behind it. For all we know, this is how wolves became dogs. But, you know, that's something we will never know. Fossil records will never be able to tell us that. So, theory is the only thing we have to go on. And for all we know, Hollywood might be right about this. I would come close to say that this movie is almost perfect, because it has one flaw. And that flaw would be how they started it off. Because they started it off with a hunt, which leads to Kata being thrown off the cliff. And then all of a sudden we jump to a week earlier, and you know when we finally get up to the hunt, they show flashes of the hunt, and then we're back on track. I wish they didn't do that, because it was really unnecessary. What they should have done was just start from a week earlier. They should have just started there, and then just played it through. That would have been a lot better, in my opinion. But, you know, I mean, I can understand. They wanted to do something different. They wanted to experiment with the movie a little. Try a new angle, as it were. I still don't think they should have done that, because it kind of complicated matters a little. But, hey, it's there. And it doesn't really ruin the movie. If anything, it just detours it a little. But when we're past that little detour, it's really great. Because the action, the drama that unfolds because of it, the whole bond between him and Alpha, it's really something. It really gives you a lot to think about. In fact, when this movie was over, me and my dad, we walked out of that theater speechless. Because we really just didn't know what to say about it. 
We were so blown away by it that we were at a loss for words. And that never happened to us before. We've never had a movie that we were actually speechless about. One of the most amazing things in this film, I think, was when Kata is under the ice and Elf is trying to save him. Mostly because of one little scene where there's a side view of both of them. And you see Alpha on top of the ice and Kata under the ice. It's quite an amazing little shot. There is one other thing I should mention. Believe it or not, you don't see the title Alpha in the beginning at all. You only see it right at the end. Why they did that? I don't know. I'm guessing they were trying something a little new, especially since these days when they put up titles, they just put them in very small text and put them in the corner. Heck, they did that in Power Rangers. So I guess I could be glad that they didn't do that this time. But why put it at the end and not at the beginning? Who knows? Another good note, if not a hilarious note, is the fact that they did give the wolf credit for this movie. They actually listed the wolf's name right on the end credits. Which is rightfully so, because the wolf was the biggest part of this movie. And believe it or not, the wolf's name was actually Chuck. That's funny to me, because Chuck is supposed to be a girl. But it wouldn't be the first time this has happened. What most people don't know is that the famous Lassie movies and Lassie TV shows, Lassie was not a female. Nope, Lassie was actually played by a male dog. A great movie, totally worth seeing. So if you love dogs, and if you want to try and open your mind a little to see the possibility as to how we ended up with Man's Best Friend, this is one you definitely should look up. Even if you don't care about the theory as to how we might have ended up with dogs, this is one you definitely got to see. It is worth watching. It's very heartwarming, very touching, and very original. So when you get the chance, check this out. You are gonna love it. This is Movie Fan, signing off.